Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of FS Passengers with me, Her 37 So our last flight, we're down here in Key West International, and that's K-E-Y-W. And in this episode, I was actually originally going to go over to uh, Freeport, but I thought we'd stop first from Southwest Florida International, that's K-R-S-W, in Fort Myers, Florida. I think we've actually been to this airport before. I think we flew a 777 here or something like that. Uh, it's just got one runway. In fact, it's like the second busiest airport in the country in the U.S. Uh, as far as just having one runway. I can't remember the other one's like Sacramento or something like that. San Diego, I can't remember. Yeah, but we're going to fly over there. As you can see, the wind is kind of basically coming from the north, maybe slightly northeast. So we will take the ILS here, uh, runway 6. Uh, as you can see down here, it says that it's actually uh, 059 degrees. The I'll show you the chart. The chart says 058, but we use 059 since uh, FSX, I don't think, really updates that. So it'll probably still be 059. Not that it matters that much. And the ILS frequency is 111.5. And as you can see, it's only 119 miles. Not very far at all. And looking at the chart, like I said, the ILS frequency is 111.5. Uh, the approach course, like I said, the chart actually shows 058, we'll use 059. Uh, the runway is 12,000 feet long. The touchdown point of the runway is 27 feet. The airport elevation is 30 feet. And we'll come in here to over to Tropic at 3,000 feet. Over here to Dolphin at 1,500 feet. It's a 3 degree glide slope. And I tell you, I've been working on this plane a little bit. Uh, I, I such so bad and... Uh, I found it in practicing it. It's really it's just about the speed. I've been coming in too slow, and if I keep my speed up, uh, you know, the plane doesn't pitch up and everything, and I'm just going to come in a little bit quicker and everything. So that should be pretty good, hopefully. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump in the plane. All right, everybody, here we are at the plane. This is parking spot number 10. Oh, man. I guess we'll just pull forward. And that's kind of a problem. <laughs> kind of a problem. I don't know, maybe I should put ourselves in a medium spot? I don't know. So, will there be medium over here? I don't know. I think it was kind of close like this uh, when I came, when we flew in. Alright, let me make sure I got my parking brake on. Turn back on. Alright, let's go over to FS Passengers. We'll start us up a flight. We don't need much fuel. I'll uh, just put it like 30%. We don't even need that much, but I'll just keep it there. Let's see if we can get it full of baggage and give us as much money as we can get. Set tight. We're a normal flight. Make sure I've got everything. It's been, geez, it's been two or three weeks since I've flown this again. That's one problem. <laughs> I'm trying to get used to the plane, but I, I never fly it. KSRW. Uh, no. K. S. R. W. There we go. No! What am I doing wrong? K. R. That's why. K. R. S. W. There we go. Southwest Florida. I knew I had to be in there. there Destination go. set. Uh, let's load them up Engine immediately. Check sure we got our four control. people. Check him that able to. Good deal. This up here, make sure they got their belts on. All right, not gonna worry about the mass and all that. We go up top, avionics master switch goes to start. And once again, it's hard to tell sometimes if that's in the middle or top or what. All right, avionics master switch is in start, ignition switch goes to off or auto. It's off right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in auto. Uh, the starter switch is off, obviously. The starter is not going. Source selector, battery, or GPU. Oh, put that on. I'll make sure that's battery, right? Yeah. Alright. I'll just put on the battery. Uh, don't need authorization, all that. Don't care about the oxygen and all that. Passenger briefing. Alright, 
can clear up this. All right, fuel quantity. I can't, I don't even know how much. Let me see if I got a view for this. Yeah, I did make one. Fuel quantity. I see our battery. I don't see the fuel. Fuel US gallons, 46 and 46. Uh, tank selector. Left or right? Go ahead and put it on right. It doesn't it says uh, you can put it either one? Fuel selector switch goes to auto up top. All right, so that's on auto. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and turn our nav lights in this pulse. Man, all right, that looks like it's down. Now it looks like it's up. Because I don't remember. I don't. I don't think it actually tells you to do that. So I'm just going to make sure because I think we started up without it last time. All right, so see, I don't see it. Understand this uh, external strobe as required. I would just be off then. Uh, internal lights, we don't care about any of that. Navigation lights are on. Don't care about the flashlight. All right. All right, before selecting the source, check ignition uh, was on auto. Starter is off. Enter uh, set. Is also off. Linear gear control is obviously down. All right, so electronics source, we did put it on battery. Voltage, let's check that real quick. 24.5 is what it needs to be at. Looks like we're actually about 27.6. That's, that's all right. Plus or minus a little bit is okay. Engine controls, manual override control off, which is notched. I believe is this one right here. Let's just right here. Off. All right. Power lever is at idle. Is it idle? Um, propeller governor max RPM. Condition lever is uh, cut off. Next page. The flaps are up. Fuel panel. Auxiliary boost pump switch comes on. So I still don't know what that is exactly. This switch fuel shift. I don't quite understand that. All right, so the uh, boost pump switch is on. Propeller area is clear. Engine start panel. We're going to uh, hit this start up. And at 13%, we put give it fuel. It's kind of hard to see this from that far away. starter it didn't look like it looks like it's stuck at 11 so I'll just go ahead and give it a little bit of fuel make sure we're flying forward Yeah, it looked like it, it was uh, stuck at 11. I didn't see it get to 13. Uh, right here. It looked like it was, yeah, it was at 11. It didn't, never even got to 13. Although it, it doesn't say exactly 13. So I'm not too sure. All right, we can turn off the starter. Make sure that we don't have an oil pressure warning. Parking brake, auxiliary boost pump, bleed off, pedo heat. Okay. So the oil pressure message should be off, and it is. All right, then there's a bunch of pages uh, talking about some other stuff. All right, condition lever now goes up extra to 100%. And we'll go back up to the fuel panel. The boost pump uh, comes off. And generator. It actually doesn't say what to put the generator on. Uh, I'd put it on main instead of standby. That makes more sense to me. All right, so that all looks good. I think this is the last page that it is. All right, so I've got one more. I think it's for the taxing. 
So I'm gonna get this one put away and we'll grab the other one. Yeah, I've got the checklist for taxing. The taxi light will come on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all this stuff on real quick. You see, it doesn't say anything about stuff like that to get the rest of it on, but I do need it on. And I know I'm gonna need the, te uh, the pedo heat and everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pedo heat on. All right, taxi light on. I'm not gonna turn that on just yet, because I can't remember if that's passenger will ding because we're not taxing just yet. Inert sep comes on. Passenger briefing, parking brake released. All that good stuff. Uh, cabin pressurization control panel, cruise altitude plus a thousand. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the bleed air on. Make sure everyone's comfortable in the heat. Give them some AC. Okay, but it's just AC, there we go. Make the people happy. Had a problem with this uh, timer too. Yeah, it doesn't want to. There it goes. Put it right at a thousand. We're not going up all that high. I think I set it for like 50, actually 5,500 or something like that. So I do need to come down here. I was thinking a thousand. I was thinking of 500 feet. just doesn't make quite make sense to me because it should be down here so if it's a smaller one shouldn't it be around five that's 1500 I don't know I'm a little bit confused so I'm gonna put it at right at 6,000 hopefully that works good all right let's hit up the tower Use them to get us out of here, and we're going to the north as you can see. West Brown, Bravo Yankee 195, ready to taxi, north departure. Bravo Yankee 195, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 9 or taxiway Alpha 5 Alpha Bravo. Contact tower on 118.2 when ready. Alright, we'll acknowledge that. We'll turn on progressive taxi. Using taxiway Alpha 5 Alpha Bravo, Bravo Yankee 195. Put this at zero nine zero. All right, and now we can turn our taxi light on. Where are you taking your progressive taxi? I'll tell you what, we'll just pull to the left. All right, parking brake is off. some fuel here, or I should say throttle, not fuel. And someone said, uh, in this plane, the condition lever, we actually never move it down. Or maybe it was the RPM lever, I can't remember. And I think that might actually be right. Because it never says anything about it in the procedures. I'm not going to worry about hitting these planes, I mean, there's no way we can avoid it, right? I mean, what do you do, really? That helicopter kind of looks like she's floating a little bit. Yeah, we can't follow that tax line or we'll hit the building with our wings as well. I think it should be taking us on the bigger taxiways. But what the hell, you know. Just my opinion. Sure, I think we might we're actually supposed to stop there. I hope not. Because that would be bad. Although 
I, what we just had to do, hitting all the planes and everything with our wings, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. And let's look here. We probably have enough room here to take off. Not that it cuts off much. The runway is just down at a little bit further, but we'll go ahead and uh, try and take off right here. Turn off the aggressive taxi. And right, get ourselves stopped right here. I'm gonna put the parking brake on. All right, parking brake is set. Condition lever is in high. Uh, propeller governor, we need to feather this twice. Then max RPM, we have to get to a little better. All right, flaps are set to take off. By the way, there's a thing called Flaps 850, which we haven't been putting up to. See, it's got up and then it's got 850. I don't quite understand that. Uh, so we'll have to look at that again here in a second, because I know it's on the procedures. The flaps are on takeoff, the de-ice, we don't really need that. Uh, runway is in good condition, no icing, so intercept, you get turned off. Let me see what that says. Is that auto over there? I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it off. Bleeder as well. So there's just off and auto, I guess, for the bleeder. Then you turn it off. There we go. Turn everything off. All right, windshield switch as required. See, I don't know because, like I said, I don't know if that's windshield heat or if that's actually windshield de-icing. I think it's kind of windshield de-icing. Oh, you should have windshield heat, I thought, but so I'll leave that off for now. Uh, if you guys know, you can tell me in the comments. Uh, windshield heat, pedo heat, we've got on. Flight controls. Good like that. Rudder pedals. Alright, we're all good. Alright, go over to my other page. Now it says to turn on the strobes. I'm not going to do that yet because I, I don't want the uh, FS passengers to ding me. Fuel, 44 and 44. That's fine with me. Fuel selector switch. Switch this is an auto just like we had it. Uh, see, it says actually auxiliary VP uh, fuel switch check auto. So we'll put that in auto. Flight instruments are checked, altimeter setting. Let's go ahead and I'll just hit it. Checked. Altitude select. We're going to go, uh, we might make it up to 5,500. All right, so there's 5,500. All right, so I think we're, yeah, we're ready to get lined up here. So let me go ahead and holler it over at the tower. Request our takeoff clearance. Tower, Bravo Yankee 195, ready for north departure at runway niner. Bravo Yankee 195, clear for takeoff. Runway niner, departure to the north of Bruce. Alright, we'll acknowledge that. Now runway we'll come up niner. here, turn Bravo on the Yankee strobe niner, and the landing lights. Get off there. Alright, let's go ahead and taxi on to the runway. Good. Turn that CDI, get it over set to the GPS.
lined up here. I'm not going to take off just yet. Easy girl. I'm gonna put on the parking brake just because I don't I gotta gotta use my hands here. Uh heading, we're good. Altimeter, we're good. Lights are all on, engine instruments were all good, everything's in the green. Alright, now here it does say, we didn't do this before, so this is the Propo Speed Governor Test. Here's your Propo Speed Test. It says, increase power until propeller RPM reaches 1900. She's kind of touchy, so I don't know how we're going to... How much power to give it to her? It's almost at 1700. All right, we're close to 1900. Propo speed, it says test, maintain, engage, observe that propeller, propeller RPM decreases 50 to 250. Our RPM went down to 1677. Uh, so we went down less than 250, so that's good. Release. So it did go down by a minimum of 50, but not less than uh, 250. All right, man, there's so many things that we have to go through. All right, now we can get to flying. West tower, Delta 1224, it's 24 miles west, inbound visual, runway niner approach. Yeah, see, they're trying to come Delta in. Delta 1224, U.S. tower, fly straight in, runway niner, altimeter 2, niner, niner 2. Alright, here we go. Key West Tower, Southwest 2138 is 10 miles west inbound visual runway niner approach. Southwest 2138, Key West Tower, fly straight in. Give her a little more power. Altimeter 2999. Just worried about FS passengers. Make straight in runway niner, Southwest 2138. Come on, we need that speed. Let's go ahead and get out. Wow, we needed all that. I was going gent gentle on the power. Should have gotten a little more aggressive. Gears coming up. Zephyr's passengers will dig it. It will take out your engine if you go too far. We just got off in time, didn't we? You are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. All right, get off of that. Niner, Alright, climb speed should be 110 to 115. So we're just slightly over that. That'll fine with that. Flaps. Flaps are coming up. That will, of course, increase our speed a little bit because we get rid of that drag. Power lever, the torque should. 121.4. We're actually below that. I'm going to leave it there because you can see we're right on the yellow mark. Now the climb speed should be about 130 knots. We're right at it. That's good. Y'all damper. I'm guessing it's talking about this one. Y'all damper comes on. why we need a, another person. Taxi light can come off. Let's start going out uh, over to the left hand to the north. I really need to get the autopilot as soon as possible to go through the, the rest of the procedures. It's just too much. I gotta take my hands off the controls to do everything. Right, climb speed, it says as required, actually. Now, 
cabin pressurization we've already done. Cabin temperature, we don't actually worry about that, but I'll turn on the AC and get the bleed and everything here in a second. Fuel tank gauges, it says check, correct, correct, uh, correct symmetry. And as you can see, they are, the right one's down a little bit more, but that's because we're on the right uh, fuel tank. See, I thought for sure it said something about the prop 850 during the climb. But I'm not seeing it here. Because the next thing goes to cruise and the power lever, you know, adjust it to however you want it. And all that. And then uh, regularly check your pressurization and the fuel. Consumption, expected fuel, all of that. And that the tank automatic tank change is happening. We're getting a little too far off to the left there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Switch over to nav. Delta one two two four cleared to land. I'm gonna switch on vertical speed as well. Put that up to about a thousand feet a minute. Just over it. Clear to land, runway niner. Delta, one, two, three, four. I'll tell you what, we might as well go on up higher. I wasn't sure exactly how, how long this flight was going to take us because it's only a little over 100 miles. We're going up to 9,500. Southwest, at 138, exit runway when able. Let's see our desired track is 005. Let me turn the heading to that. Southwest at 138, contact ground on 121.9er. One there we one go. 121.9er, southwest two at 138. You can see it says it's got checklist procedures. It says flap control transition from up to 850. I don't understand that. And then from 850 to up. It says altitude above. Let me. I'll read this to you. Flap control transition from up to 850. Now see, they're up, but then 850 is up here. I don't quite understand that. It says flaps, uh, flaps checked up. Propeller RPM at 2,000, which is right where we're at. Right at 2,000. Torque plus or minus 100 percent. We're right at 98.4. It says power lever as required. Torque less than. 121.4%. Flap control from 850 to up, altitude at or above 1500. Propeller at same, it's all the same. But I don't quite understand that. I don't know what the, eight, the up to 850 is all about. I mean, is, does the 850 have, the TVM 850 have a certain flap setting that it likes to cruise at? As I move that, you saw the power lever. See that power lever adjust? By the way, and it didn't say anything about auto autopilot trims being on. But I'm going to turn those on. Because they should be on, you would think. All right, but it says 34.25 until we get there. Just 108 miles. All right. So I'll tell you what. We're not going to be at 9,500 feet for very long, are we? But I'm going to go ahead and speed her up, everyone, and we'll be back in just a little bit.
right, everybody. I'm slowing her down here. We're at normal speed, about 28, a little over 28 miles out. Uh, I've already gone through the checklist. The uh, tank selector didn't automatically change again, so I had to do it in the left. I uh, put this already went and put the flaps back into the up position because it did call out for it to be in the up position. And so the next uh, procedure checklist is actually uh, a long final. Now we're not using ATC, as you all probably already know. We never use it anymore. Here's my little note card. Uh, it's 111.5 the nav. Five. Switch that. Put this in 111.5 as well. So 11. That in there. 111.5, 111.5. IRSW, which is correct. Well, let's go over here to the communications. And I'm going to put in 12465. Six five, not six two five. There we go. One two four six five. Fort Myers Airport Information. Go. Julia. One eight one four zero. Wind zero three zero at seven. Visibility greater than twenty miles. Sky conditions: view clouds at one three thousand one hundred. Temperature two six two point two three. Six is in use. Two nine or nine or two. two, nine or nine or two. two nine or nine or two. All right, that sounds good to me. That all looks good. Check out the procedures. Select the approach. Never remember which one it is. Uh, it's the other one. I'm trying to get the big one. There we go. LS06. See, this is where I get screwed up. See, I gotta activate it. There we go. Activate the approach, enter. We'll start flying over there, because we're on the GPS, of course. Now we're coming down to 3,000 feet. By the way, I'm gonna go ahead and, we are actually at normal speed. We're just flying really fast, I guess bring back the power just a little bit 227 knots which is fine all right the heading will be for the runway 059 let's so get this set in here Tell you what, this aircraft, man, what a trip! <laughs> this has been the most difficult to fly. This the the procedures. I mean, we never really used procedures for a whole lot until this plane, because this plane kind of requires it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in heading because I want to go all the way out. Just because I want to come in a little faster, and keep the speed up, or anything else, I want a, kind of like a, a more of a longer approach. Because the landing speed is actually flaps landing speed it says 80 to 85 knots. But we've been coming in. If you come into 80, 85 before you touch down, you know the plane starts to pitch up and everything gets a little wicked so we'll come in a little quicker 
like I say, I practiced, I actually did practice it, and it worked out pretty well. I did it several landings, and uh, everything worked pretty well. So hopefully we can, <laughs> I can repeat that. Looks like Fort Myers, it looks like Latin VFR. I, I don't understand why they love photo reel so much. Photo reel when you're up high is great, but when you're down around the airport it looks terrible it just does this CDI you hurry up and turn I was gonna turn it just a second ago but Now we're off to the left. Bring back the power a little bit. Alright, we are... I was going to say that... I'm going to switch this back over to the right tank. Looks like it has a little bit more. Under 200 knots. Propeller lever goes to our max RPM. It is. And also, under 200 knots, inert set comes back on. Lead air, everything should be in auto. Switch over to nav. And it's not doing anything. We're off to the side, as you can see. I really don't get it, man. Sometimes the ILS in this plane, some of my planes works, and sometimes they just do not work at all. And we're too high, of course. Oh my god, are we too high. Jeez, Jiminy Christmas. We're gonna go around, obviously. We'll put that to 2700. Yeah, the ILS just isn't working for me. Yeah, there's so much to do in this plane to get ready and everything. That's why I wanted that longer approach. I'm going to have to go around here. What are you doing, plane? How did I just go from heading to nav again? Unreal. Was I not in net in heading? I'm almost positive I was. It, it actually started to work there for a second. I'll tell you what, the frame rate is horrible. I mean, it's add-on scenery, but it shouldn't be that bad. I think part of it's this plane too. It, it doesn't seem like we get real good frame rates with this at all. I'm surprised we got through Miami without uh, any problems at all. All right, we're right at 2,700 feet. straight back out and then make our right turn. Actually, let's go a little bit out to the left so we make our turn. We'll have to loop it. Alright, our speed is fine. Everything is fine, really. And we brought a little extra fuel with this, so that's always good. 
by the way, since we're so low, let me put my tag so light on. And it doesn't say anything about bleed air. Uh, I didn't know if I should leave it on or not when we uh, took off, because I think it does have auto, right? Yeah, it's in auto, so I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it there. Air conditioning is in auto, so I think we'll be good. See, we're actually low or too high right here at 2,700 feet. Let's move that to 2,600. Now we're actually coming up on it. So we actually started out too high because we were, came in originally at 2,800. Move out to the left just a little bit more. That way we don't end up looping around like that. So I can never remember where double speed or normal or what. I'll pull back on the power just a little bit. said the landing speed is 80 to 85 knots which seems very slow I actually do not even see airport it's off to the right zero five nine coming up on it there it is over here let's hit the nav Looks like she's got it, so she's coming back left, and you can see it is off to the left. There's the approach hold. Hit to arm the approach hold. All right, long final. Fuel is good, inert step is on. Linear control under 178 knots. Gear is coming down. Under 178 knots, the flaps come uh, to take off. The landing lights are on. They're on a short final, autopilot will be disconnected. The flaps will be a landing under 122 knots and uh, was it like I said, the landing speed 80 to 85 knots? Come back on the power just a little bit. Like I say, I want to come in a little bit faster than normal, but can't come in blazing fast. We're still not really even perfectly lined up or anything. I mean, I don't know. It's, it still says we're off to the left a little bit. So we probably put the landing gear, and obviously the flaps out too far. Too far out, but like I say, we're trying to get get this thing, uh, learn how to do this thing a little better, so I'm all good with it 
doing it like that for now. Under 122 knots, the flaps will go down again. Right at 122 right now. We don't have to do it right at 122 either. I'll let it get a little bit closer. Everything looks good. Let's try and land it correctly for once. Come on, girl. We're actually at a thousand feet. Flaps are in landing, landing position. Yaw damper is coming off. Autopilot coming off as well. Speed is coming down a little too much. Give her. Although we're a little high as well. Man, she's jagged and uh, wobbly. speed we're right at the glide slope I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little more power actually because I don't want it to drop so one of the problems we've been having it's gonna be hard to make a good landing with this though it's jagged man we're off to the left as well don't drop on me give it a little more power Backing off the power. Not a half bad landing. Uh, she's going left on me. Stop going left on me, plane. <laughs> trying to make that taxiway. I don't know if it's going to happen. Eh, it's not going to happen. I'm going to keep going on to the next one. All right. Laps are being retracted. Yeah, see, so we come in quicker and uh, it, it changes the whole game, doesn't it? I should have done this earlier. Come on. Hurry. Left or right. I had a feeling it was going to be to the left. Had to wait on it. Come on, girl. Come up here and stop. Landing lights can come off, strobe can come off as well. I'm gonna put the park brake on so I can grab all this and so don't have to worry about it. Alright, let's check this out. Power lever, well, it's idle, that's actually the landing. Alright, taxing. Taxi light is on. 
The inert set switch is on. Check it, it is on. Heck. Patch inner briefing, parking brake released. Alright, I guess we can just taxi on normal. Nothing to really say to me, huh? <laughs> For the taxi. Landing and taxi. I like the, it says the landing, uh, power lever idle. I'm like, yeah, duh. It's not, I don't use full power on landing? Amazing. I hope I, to hell I recorded that. I can always use this to replay, but. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I thought about it several times, like, make sure and hit R. And when we were getting really close, I was like, uh, I don't think I hit R. But we were way too close for me to take my hand off. And hey, we got a plane over here. It's a static plane, UPS, old UPS. I don't know why they use those liveries. Um, this came out, I think it was updated at least a year ago. And yet they've got old, old UPS liveries. But hey, it doesn't bother me, just at least that there's planes here, because we have so many times, so many areas, there are no planes. So the fact that they put planes in here, static planes, I'm good with that. I don't know exactly where they're taking this. I hope they don't take us too far away. It's getting off the taxi line. I guess we could go to the taxi. I don't know if I should follow that or follow the taxi line. That's a pretty cool building. I like the sign. By the way, I do believe the scenery is from Latin VFR. I got They have some really nice airports, and they do a lot of uh, airports that just otherwise wouldn't be done. I'm going to go over here since it says go to the left right there. They, and they obviously, uh, them in Tropical Sim, to, uh, especially Latin VFR, they have, obviously they do more stuff to the south, South America, Central America, stuff like that. And yeah, we're going to stop right here. I'm going to throw the parking brake on. I never mess with the cabin pressurization on the way down. I probably should have. Well, I definitely should have. All right. Parking brake is on. Condition lever is still in high idle. Propeller governor. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. That is the taxing for the takeoff. So let me, there's still yet a third one. Now this is after landing. See, the other one was the taxing, so I thought it was taxi over here. So after landing, I should have done this. Runway clear, airplane was stopped. That was my bad. I saw, the, I looked at the page number and uh, I thought we were good. All right. Airframe, DI switch, all that is off. Inert uh, SEP is on, however. Pedo heat can come off. Bleed air, switch as required. Radar transponder flaps. Strobe is off. Landing lights are off. Oxygen switch is off. I don't mess with the oxygen. Parking brake is set. Condition lever. Check it is in high idle. Power lever, idle for one minute minimum. Uh, taxi light can come off. Now see, AP trim's master switch comes off. I don't know why. It never says to freaking turn it on in the first place. Avionics master switch, you go to start. Lead switch, you come off. Is it off and auto? I guess it's the only one. That has three positions though. Turn off the air conditioning. That is off. 
pressurization, I screwed that up, like I said. I was supposed to set that uh, earlier. Propeller governor. Feather for 15 seconds. Alright, that's about 15. Condition lever, cut off. Inert set, you can come off. Avionics master switch, whoa. Passed it. Avionics master switch, you come off. Exterior lights are all, all come off. So, whole system in that. By the way, you all can start getting out. I'll let you all out. I was wondering if it was going to tell me about all this next. We did. There's another page. Interior lights panel. All switches are off. Fuel the auxiliary uh, boost pump. Comes off. Fuel selector uh, goes to manual. Tank selector. Which didn't work again. Goes off. Uh, generator selector. Ah, shoot. You come off. <laughs> Uh, source selector goes off. Put the gate down. Crash lever. Uh, let's push down. Parking brake. As required, you can leave it on, off, whatever. Alright, they're all off. Yes, because there's only four of them, though. In the flight. We won't make a ton of money because it's so short. Only 118 nautical miles, as you can see. Time airborne 44 minutes 20 seconds. Flight time 58.50. Time on the ground 26 minutes. Minutes, 58 seconds. Average speed, 160.90 knots. Climb time, 7 minutes, 55 seconds. Cruise time, 15.55. Average cruise speed, 250.77 knots. Set time, 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Landing speed, 76.95 knots. Uh, came down 156.92 feet a minute, which was nice. Landing pitch, 3.83 degrees. Landing weight, 6,754 pounds. Total fuel used, 253 pounds. Uh, used 74 on the climb, 100 on the cruise, and used uh, we were using 380 pounds an hour on that cruise, and used 77 pounds on the descent. Passenger opinion, exceptional flight. Thank you, 100. Uh, percent Made 282 dollars from the tickets, 299 on the cargo. Made more for that. Uh, spent 114 dollars on fuel, seven for the airport taxes, 25 for the insurance. So real income was 435 dollars. Times the 50, 21,750. Got 43,090 from our fleet of five aircraft, uh, giving us a total income of 64,840. Company reputation, I thought we should be 100%, so we increased 0.21% to 97.94. We got 230 pilot bonus points, 50 for the nice landing, 150 for the perfect flight, and 30 for the correct airport. And lost 50 because of the beacon lights, but we have to lose that because of the beacon lights because we don't have beacon lights. Or nothing that this recognizes as beacon lights. Ah, oh, she's all closed up. What a... It was nice, you know, finally a good landing in this plane. It's been hectic. And I really didn't like it. I'm, but, you know, I gave it some practice, like I said, and uh, it, it totally turned it around, for at least for that flight. Except for the approach, the first try. We got, we're a little close. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. I hope you all did enjoy it. I'll catch you guys on the next flight.